Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and then I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of the truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. Love, support, and guidance. Those three words sum up my relationship with God and this church family. I was born into the church and I was raised here, and six years ago I was confirmed a member of Mark and Woods. And I, have, and I thank Mark and Woods for guiding me to the person you see today. Who am I? I'm a young, passionate man that wants to help others and work God's land. God's people in God's land. We made, he, made my road, he made a road in my life that I have been taking one step at a time, day by day. Along the way, he has put special people in my life to help me out. And they are there when I'm weak and when I'm strong. My youth leaders, they have shown me kindness, motivation, and the best way to be a disciple of God. My friends have taught me it's okay to be myself and let nobody change who you're meant to be. Treat others the way you want to be treated. Serve others before yourself. And ignore the mean comments of others, listen to the one voice that matters, and that's God alone. These sentiments have always proven right to me. Because of the church, uh, church programs and uh, my friends and the leaders that I've had at this church, I've been able to dive into the word of the Lord and really know what it means to be a follower of the, of the word. And many of you guys have done that in my life, and I need to follow the way of the Lord and do the best I can not to sin. Always believe in him, and things will always work out in the end. Sometimes I might take a shortcut or a back road, but it may, it may take a little longer, but you know God's always there with me, and he's always going to get me in the right direction where I need to be. God gave me my first breath and continues to give me life today. My life is one of service to God's people and to God's land. This path has led me to an agricultural school to major in agricultural business. And I will not forget this church family. For many years, my family has always been in support of me and doing and following my dreams. And I just want to thank them for that. Uh, my grandparents, my mom, and my aunt are here. And I just want to thank the church as well for impacting me for all the years that I've been here and guiding me through working in the name of the Lord and reading through scripture and finding out more about his name. Thank you. Second scripture lesson is John 15, five through, verses 5 through 11. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me, and I in them, bear much fruit, because apart from you, you can do nothing. Apart. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered and thrown into a fire and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, Ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that you may joy that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. Good morning, everyone. My name is Grace Waguspack, and I'd like to begin by saying thank you to a few people. Firstly, to you all, the congregation. Thank you for all of the support that you give to the youth group 
and for allowing me to come up here and speak to you today. To Shelby and Sean, thank you for being the best youth leaders I could have asked for and for always being there to guide me through my faith journey. To my parents, there are no words to express how thankful I am for both of you each and every day. You've supported me through ups and downs, through good days and bad days, and have loved me unconditionally since day one. And finally, to God, I'd like to thank him for everything that he has given me and continues to give to me. It is because of him that I am here speaking to you all today. He has never left my side, never stopped loving me, never stopped trying to reach me, even when I've pushed him away or ignored him. Some of you may know, but for those of you who don't, I am adopted. My parents adopted me from China when I was one and brought me back to the States. I don't think about it much, but my life would have been much different if it hadn't been for them. And that makes me think, God must have had a plan for me. He must have wanted me to be adopted. He must have wanted me to have the parents that I have. He must have wanted me to be placed where I am today. I don't know about you, but I often find myself wondering, what does God want me to do? What am I supposed to become? When I was little, these questions hardly ever crossed my mind, if ever. I was just a little kid going about their life, wanting to, so badly to have more knowledge, more freedom. I just wanted to grow up, and grow up I did. I found that having all the answers wasn't the most important thing, that more freedom maybe wasn't the best thing. And as I got older, I found myself wishing I could go back to simpler times. But God has us grow for a reason. We aren't supposed to stay small, young, and naive forever. As I've grown, so too has my faith. It has truly become my faith rather than a faith. When I was little, I went to church because that's what you did on Sundays. I didn't really care about what the pastor was saying. I would sit in the pews, color in a coloring book, and maybe go to Sunday school with the other kids afterwards. Now I go to church because I want to. I want to learn more about God. I want to grow closer to him. I want to keep growing in my faith. That growth, however, is not a walk in the park. It takes work. I've had many highs, many lows in my life, some lows harsher than others. It is in these low times that my faith was tested. It's easy as you say, yes, I believe in God, and so should you, when everything is going my way. When the sea is smooth and there are no ripples or waves, it's easy to praise God, to say, God is good. However, when the waves are crashing over you and seem to keep shoving you down repeatedly and relentlessly, that is when praising God becomes a challenge. That is when you find out how strong your faith is. I recently had my faith tested in such a way. Many of you know that I am a gymnast. I've been doing gymnastics for almost 12 years now, and I'm going to be continuing as a collegiate athlete as I go off to college. This year was my senior season, my last year of J.I. gymnastics. This year was going to be my year. I had trained hard all summer long and was so ready to get out there and compete for one last season with my team. But then at the very first competition, I landed my first tumbling pass way too short and knew that my season was then in jeopardy. I landed and the first thing I felt was my ankle pop. After that, it wasn't the pain that I first felt. It was regret, then shock and disappointment and embarrassment, and then finally came the pain. Everyone kept telling me that it wasn't my fault, that my season wasn't over, to keep my head up. But I knew deep down that my season was over. I tried to deny that feeling up until the very last moment about a month ago. <laughs> I had been doing so well. I was so prepared. What went wrong? I was mad at myself, at the situation, at God. I didn't know why he let this happen. But then I began to think, why would God let this happen? And as I continued to ponder that, I realized that in the whirlwind of highs that I had been having leading up to this event, I hadn't done much thinking about God. I hadn't been acknowledging the blessings that he had been given to me. I hadn't been talking to him. I had been pushing him to the back burner. This was the first time I had actually taken a moment to stop and acknowledge him. And it was to accuse him and to complain to him. God wants us to be close to him and he wants us to have companionship with him. And sometimes we drift away from him and he gives us reminders that he is still there. I think that my situation was one of these reminders. That day I had had a choice. I could have done the easier tumbling pass that I knew I could hit 
I could do the harder one that I wasn't as sure about. I chose the more difficult path. And from my poor decision, God created an opportunity. He created an opportunity for me to get close to him again, for me to rely on him again. I was like the psalmist in Psalm 119, 67 and 71, who wrote, because I was, before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I obey your word. And it was good for me to be afflicted so that I might learn your decrees. I recently listened to a sermon where the pastor said that when bad things happen, maybe instead of looking for a reason, we should look for a revelation. I realized then that I had found my reason and it was in fact a revelation. It was a revelation of God's power and love. It was a revelation that no matter how hard times get, he will always be there for me. It was the revelation that even though my gymnastics season may have ended short, my senior year had been far from disaster. Now, as I prepare to graduate and head off to college, I find that my faith is stronger than ever before. It was shaken this year, shaken to the point of collapse. But through that collapse, I was able to rebuild it on a stronger foundation on a foundation that will hold up to the trials that come my way. As I close, I would like to leave everyone, especially my fellow graduating seniors, with this. Life is but a glimpse, the blink of an eye compared to eternity. It is a fleeting, fleeting glance, a moment out of time. Life is a chance, a chance to change the lives of others, a chance to leave a lasting legacy, a chance to be alive. Life is a gift, a gift from the maker of heaven and earth, a gift that is not to be forsaken. The breath in your lungs, the life in your body, these are gifts from the creator. Even in this fleeting time on earth, let your life be an example to others. Show them the eternal love and grace of the Father. Allow them to see and believe in the one true God, the one who gives life to all. Thank you.